All right, time once again for catching up with Tommy Mack here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com. We're also on the 1010XL app. Make sure you download that great, great app. We're live on Facebook like we always are. 1010's page, my own as well, and then my uh, esteemed producer, Grammage, will cut it up, get it up on YouTube, and spread it all over social media. Of course, it is a Friday afternoon, Friday before the Pro Bowl. We'll talk about that. Super Bowl 58 a week uh, later. That's coming up fast and furious. And uh, we're also going to get into Trevor Lawrence today and... uh, you know, what do we expect out of him in 2024? And, uh, you know, maybe even the concept of taking care of him in the contract status a little early than you would. But let's uh, welcome in Grammage before we get in all that. Hey, Grammage. Happy Friday, sir. How What's we doing? What's up, dude? Oh, yeah. Feeling good? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. It's Friday. You told me on the way in, we met in the parking lot, and you're like, man, Friday. <laughs> Friday's supposed to be chill. I know. You got a lot to do on Friday. It ain't man. chill, dude. No, no, I hear you. Got a, uh, got a Gator Bites podcast that went out this morning. Got a, yep. a clip of Dan Hicken that went out this morning. Nice. Got uh got the most important podcast of the day rolling right now. That's right, so, baby. Uh, Appreciate that. Appreciate oh, yeah. that. Senior Bowl going on over in Mobile, Alabama. Pro Bowl this weekend down in Orlando. Uh, you know, look, big time for football. Football doesn't stop. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it, it just doesn't stop. And especially with the, you know, the season and, and how long it takes now and when the Super Bowl is going to be played, that offseason, it's going to be quick. I mean, before you know it, it's combine. Then free, before you know it, before you know it, it's free agency. Then combine. Then the draft. I mean, it's just going to continue to roll on. We will continue to roll on as well. So, um, you know, I don't, I, 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 I really don't like saying this because I've never been to a Pro Bowl, right? I've never been voted a Pro Bowl. My wife has. I've I've obviously, you know, made that public, I, and I love it. It's fantastic, and she well-deserved. She was one hot little take it cheerleader, let me tell you. She still is. But um, the Pro Bowl is, just, you know, it's a special day in our house. You know, when she wakes up, she's like, you know what? I, I, I was there, you know, back after the 98 season, back when it was Hawaii. When the game really meant something, you know, there was an AFC, NFC little battle, you know, uh, today it's not like that, right? It's, it's, it's different. Uh, yeah, it's in Orlando. Yeah, there's no football game, but they're playing games, dodgeball and other things that are fun. I'm not saying it's not, but, and I don't, I don't want to say it diminishes the Pro Bowl because guess what? It goes on your resume. Whether you're an alternate or not, you say Pro Bowl, that's a – how many Pro Bowls did you go to? Well, I went to this many. That means something. It means something as as a status as a football player and in contract negotiations. So it does matter. I'm not trying to say that. But remember when the, the Pro Bowl, the game, was actually something you looked forward to. The superstars of each conference were going against each other to win a game. And I don't know how long ago that was. I think the last physical game might have been when Sean Taylor hit Brian Mormon. Do you remember that? God rest his soul, rest in peace, the great Sean Taylor. You know, everyone thought it was kind of like, that's when it started to change, I think, because some guys thought, ah, it's just, you know, an all-star game. Some guys like, no, I'm still trying to win. You'd get a bonus. You know, and if your team... You know, if you were an NFC fan team and your team didn't play some of these AFC guys, you wanted to see your guy go against that superstar as well. I remember back in 96, right? I remember Brunel went, I think Keenan, Brunel definitely went, maybe Baselli went. And anyway, Brunel threw for 400 yards, a few touchdowns, and was the MVP. And when you came back, you're like, yeah, man, that's my quarterback. Like, he was a big deal. You know, today, obviously, they're not even playing the game. They're playing the Senior Bowl, which is great. I think you have to. Uh, They're playing the East-West Shrine, you know, in college, playing all that. You got to play that. Um, But the Pro Bowl is definitely, you know, different. Let me ask you this, just as a young, younger fan of the NFL, does what they're doing now, what they're doing now, does it diminish being a Pro Bowler? It's hard to say. It's still a great honor. Does it diminish being a Pro Bowler? No, I don't. No, I don't yep. think so. Because no, you, you'll you always be a Pro Bowl. I I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, because yeah. because you does it have you, the same weight? All pros different now. That's totally different. Yeah, but does Pro Bowl like Randall McDaniel nine straight Pro Bowls or ten? Right, that means something. 
right? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And it still means something today. I don't know. I just feel like that without I've never the game, heard, it's like I've never know. heard someone say, "Oh, so and so is a Pro Bowler." I've never heard someone say, "Well, you know, they don't like play a game now, so like I don't doesn't matter." I've never no, heard someone say. No, that. I know, and I don't mean to sound like that. I'm not trying to yeah, sound yeah, like yeah. that. No, but, but it used to matter. Like that game used to really matter. I mean, that was a big, big deal. I don't, and a lot of guys opt out now. I mean, and people do like they're like, okay, look at the quarterbacks who are Pro Bowls. They didn't really have a Pro Bowl year, you know, but they're in it, right? You know what I mean? Geno Hayes, did he have a Pro Bowl year? I mean, Trevor was an alternate. Like, he didn't have anywhere near a Pro Bowl year. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? I don't know. Hey, man, hats off to the guys who make the Pro Bowl because that's huge, and I never did. So. A, in my lifetime. Again, I, mean, I don't like speaking about it, but it just – look, I, I do enjoy the game. I used to enjoy the game. Like, I'd go – I'd make sure I watched the the Pro Bowl. It was, it, was, it was great. And by the way, they should go back to it being – I know it extends a year – but go after it. Let, let the Super Bowl champion. That's when it really was, you know, your Super Bowl champ show up and they're in the Pro Bowl. Not going to play a lot, but they're playing. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think they I think they shouldn't have it in between the championship and the Super Bowl. They should have the Pro Bowl when it's all done. Then have your all-star game. And then let the best play. And I don't know. I mean, look, you, should can there you, be? Get hurt? you can get hurt in flag football. I mean, the, the the running back from the Ray or the Patriots, Edwards, the Georgia kid, blew his knee out when they were playing on the sand. They did away with that right away. Remember that he got hurt going up for a ball, came down, fell on a wrong, shattered his knee. Maybe came back for a year. He was like the rookie of the year. You know what I mean? I think he was offensive rookie of the year before that injury. But anyway, I uh, should you know, the. Look. I mean, they're not they they don't have a game anymore, so they're clearly not going to do it now. But. Pretend they were they still played a game where they yep. actually put the pads on and played. Did you ever think the NFL should do like what baseball does and like give an incentive to one conference, like a competitive incentive? It, it, you, they didn't have that incentive, I don't think, but it used to have that kind of feel. Like it was right. a big deal to win the Pro Bowl to to you know represent your conference as one of the best players, and all the greats were there, right? They were. They all played in it, and back then they they did wait till after the Super Bowl. And that was, but that the problem is that was back when we had fourteen just, games or sixteen, then sixteen. But and like just love the game and wanting to beat somebody, yeah, and a paycheck was enough of a motivation. Yeah, they got paid. They get extra money yeah. for winning. Yeah. Now it's like it's a hassle to go to. Right. It's just a pain in the ass. You know. It's not like an AFC player. Yep. There's no pride in being in the AFC wanting to beat the NFC. Like, that isn't I really like it used to be. I guess that's what I was trying to yeah, get Yeah, like, at. it used to be a yeah. thing. It's like, yeah. no, I'm going to show the, the AFC that right. we're the better conference or vice versa or whatever. Right. Now it's like, yeah, they don't care about that. That didn't matter. I wonder how many guys, and I bet you there were guys that went year after year after year after year. I wonder how many guys ever said, you know what? I don't feel like going to Hawaii this year. It's I got to drag my family out there. You know what I mean? After you, it's like going to London the first time, you're probably like, "Oh, this is awesome," and then after that, you're like, "Oh man, I got to go to London." You know, if you're a player in your first maybe like three to four years, yeah, it's got to be awesome. Yeah, but after that, especially like just like you said, if you're like the type of guy that would make it every year, yeah, that's got to get old. Listen, man, I, the hula bowl, which was for college, eight days in Waikiki, right on the beach. Five star luxury hotel. The meals were incredible. The food was incredible. Everything was incredible. We practiced a little bit in the morning. Lou Holtz was our coach. The rest of the day, we could do whatever we want. I mean, whatever we want. We could go out, could do just as long as we, and practices were nothing. They did a couple walkthroughs, make sure you know what you're doing, and then get out of here. It was like done in an hour. And it was funny. I, I actually roomed with Devon McDonald, who was a linebacker for the Irish. And he's like, man, I can't believe Coach Holtz is this easy. He's so rough on us back at home. He's like, this is not him at all, like giving us all this time off. But I can only imagine what the Pro Bowl was like in that type of fat. You know what I mean? That's All the no fans, one, all yeah. the people, all the stuff, all the just – and it wasn't events. You know, they did some physical events. But it was just appearances – you know, I don't know. That's got to be – no one really talks about that. 
it's got to be a tough like balance as a if you're coaching the Pro Bowl. Yeah, I think now it's it's pretty clear you're going to be like super relaxed. Yeah, but back when they tried to strap it up and play a real game, that had to be a tough balance as a coach. Yeah, because it's like you know. You want you're a coach, so you're gonna want a somewhat structured and organized practice. Where you actually get yeah, some stuff done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these are pro bowlers, so yeah, you're not gonna get yeah, after their no, ass. And no, be, so no. that would have to be like a tough balancing act that probably wouldn't be forever. Could you imagine uh, Tom Coughlin coaching a pro bowl? Well, you're on vacation, so it's a reward. You know what I mean? You just do right. have to play a game, or you used to have to play a game. So, but it, like, is someone like Tom Coughlin? capable of being like a like a chill coach yeah that's not in his uh, dna you yeah, know what i mean well, like Lou holtz was like that you know, yeah yeah that's true that's true wild but again college still pro but nonetheless look man if you're into it that's fantastic congrats to all our jags that are there um you know doing their thing and and it's a great recognition there's no doubt about it i do miss the uh the old days of you know when it had some meaning to it but whatever we move on uh, we move on to Super Bowl 50. You know, I, I said something last night, um, and it threw some guys off. So last night was a season one finale of my happy hour show at the Graffiti Bar. We had seven guys show up. So we had eight, including me, Sammy Kavars, uh, Dave Campo, Brian Sexton, Nolan Carroll, Lonnie Martz, Kevin Hardy, and Pete Mitchell. And we had this round table. And we were talking about the Super Bowl and the Chiefs and the 49ers, who you think. And, yeah. and I made a comment. I said, you know, um, I really got to commend the Chiefs, Andy Reid, and the leaders of that team, and including, in tr- including Travis Kelsey, because the way they've handled this whole Taylor Swift phenomenon, you know what I mean? Like, that could totally mess up a team's chemistry. Just because you get, I mean, if one guy is going to be in the clouds, you'd think it's Travis Kelsey, right? I'm dating this star. It's like, I was trying to think back, like, and I'm not trying to compare, and I I don't remember Marilyn Monroe, but like Joe DiMaggio married Marilyn Monroe. Remember, that was like, it used to be so like, like, that's so cool. Like, this is incredible. Like, you're marrying, you know, you're marrying sports with, with, with film, with major movie stars. You know, I, when Romo dated uh, Jessica Simpson, it, it didn't seem to be that big of a deal. It was cool. I remember making fun of him because I always felt like he was looking up, trying to see if she was watching him and stuff. Because it can get in your head. That's what. And and look, look at Andy Reid, how he handles it. I mean, look, I don't care what's going on in Kansas City world. They come to play. I mean, they are ready to absolutely go. I think there's something to be said that they can handle that stardom. Right, we had look. I I I said this earlier. Uh, uh, Andre Bad Moon Rising was with uh, Left Eye Lopez from the trio. Uh, the heck were they called? Don't go chasing waterfalls. No scrubs. They were the, the little little rap three rap girls that were really cute. And they and one of them was Left Eye Lopez. Right, she ended up passing. God rest her soul. But he was with her, like married to her. They were living together, what have you. But. I, it wasn't that big of a deal. Like, you didn't be like, oh, wow, you know. I mean, maybe some of the guys were like, hey, can you hook me up with the other members of the, of the group? I wasn't one of them, but maybe that happened. But I do. I think there's something to that. They are so grounded. And, again, back to Kelsey. And I, you, if you go watch earlier shows. TLC. TLC. Thank you. TLC. Thank you. Um, Earlier shows when Ke- this first came out, Kelsey looked sluggish in that one game. Do you remember that, Grammage? It was like he was dropping balls. He didn't have burst. Like it, it, he was getting tackled right away. And you're like, okay, women are weakening his legs or something, right? He's caught up women in the clouds. Weakening legs. legs. But seriously, you thought, like, caught in the clouds. I'm dating a star. I'm going to Argentina to watch her you know, perform, I'm flying back and I'm trying to get to Pratt. You know what I mean? Like, no, he he keeps it all together. I think there's something to be said for that organization, the way Andy Reid makes them keep it together. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think there's something to that. I think, I think Kansas City is going to win this game, and I know we're a week away. We'll break it down a little bit more next week. Well, I think for um, Andy Reid – it's easy for him. All the commercials. I mean, think about it. Forget Taylor Swift. Think all the State Farm commercials they're in. 
but they still keep it. They still have that desire to be Super Bowl champions and not caught up in all the hoopla of everything else that's going on around them. And Andy, I think it's commendable. And Andy Reid can look at Travis Kelsey and say, I know you're a Hall of Fame tight end. I know you're dating Taylor Swift, but I am still the ideal male physique. <laughs> that's right. So until you can catch up to me, you still got a lot to prove. Buddy. I tell you, one of my favorite moments of Andy Reid is this year when Kelsey threw the helmet, he grabbed the helmet, and he went over to Kelsey and Gave him a little shoulder, boom, moved him. Like, didn't knock him on his butt or nothing, but hit him hard enough to where he moved. And you could tell when they looked at each other, he's like, don't do that. That's uncalled for. Or knock that crap. You know, right away, and it was over right then and there. You think Andy Reid's all this soft and cuddly, and I'm sure he is, but when it's time to get down and dirty and keep his guys focused and in line and and held accountable, I guarantee you that guy's as tough as they come. No I feel doubt. like I feel like he's a type of coach that doesn't really I I mean I've never seen him in like a practice or anything but I I couldn't imagine him being a huge like yeller or like you know super rah rah yeah until it like you just like you said until it I calls think for he, it. he would and I but I feel like he picks and chooses when to do it wisely yeah so it doesn't fall on deaf ears yeah right so when he does get angry or spit like right he commands the room. Well, think of that moment. He didn't rip his head off. He didn't scream at him in front of everybody. He went up to him. He took the helmet and then gave him a little bump. Like, what does right. that mean? That means knock it off. And that's Travis Kelsey. By oh, the way. yeah. No, I know. That ain't the I know. That ain't the backup guard. Or, right. Yeah, guy barely treat, on the roster. That's my point. Like, yeah. this, he, yeah, he keeps right. it together, man. There's something to be said for that. Now, San Fran's got a, a smaller version, right? Uh, McCaffrey dates... That famous, uh, I don't know, she was Miss America or something. Uh, Cuomo, not Cuomo, what is her last I'm name? Not sure. Yeah, you do. You know who she is. She's I, a I starlet. I'm not good with she's celebrities. She's a model or something. So she's not Taylor Swift, but she's a mod. I mean, they, they're, they're, look, when you've got superstar players, all the other stars want to come out and see them. They do. I mean, there is something to athletes wanting to be entertainers, entertainers wanting to be athletes. You know, we, we all look at the Super Bowl like, wow, I wish I was in the Super Bowl. Well, they do too. And then when we see them perform, we're like, man, I wish I could do that. You know, wow, look at this crowd. Are you kidding me? It's all for just them, whether it's a band or a singer or whatever. Olivia Culpo. Yeah. Culpo, yeah, Culpo, yeah. I, she's Anyway, I know my, my, my daughter's – uh, follower, she's some kind of influencer, but they they're together. They put it to that kid comes to play. I mean, that's one thing about these two teams. But they, this is there's no finesse at all. This is like I'm ready for a fist fight. I'm ready to go toe to toe. Yeah, we got big play capability. Yes, there's going to be some fireworks. But at the end of the day, we're both going to be extremely physical. And look at look at Kyle Shanahan. He doesn't. He seems calm all the time. But you know what he relies on the veterans. The veterans that'll make sure that they come to play. Ever the Kittles of the world, Trent Williams, making sure, hey guys, this is a fight. This is something we we gotta be I'm telling you, one of the most impressive things I saw this season in twenty twenty three was being on the field for the alumni weekend and Kansas City came out. And you're like, Whoa. Very impre- like impressive their energy, their, their, the, how they looked in a uniform, their size, their athletic ability, the stars. You're like, oh, there's a star. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, holy cow. Uh, they looked like a different team. They played like a different team. I think our team might have been a little bit of an awe of them as they approached the field. That's the kind of feel you felt while you're on that football field that day. So this is going to be fun, man. I mean, I still think KC wins. Uh, the magic of Mahomey and uh, Kelsey will will continue, and just the pure dominance of Chris Jones. What a playmaker! I mean, what a difference maker he can wreck. Would it? I mean, it's got to be incredible to be a, one man who could wreck an entire offense. You know what I mean? Chris Jones is that guy from and, smack dab in the middle of the line and wherever right yeah. put him on right hand, put him on the nose, put him on the guard. He's beating everybody. I mean, that's what he does. What a, and you know, it's funny about Casey's defense, not funny, but they weren't that great throughout the years. A bend don't break type thing, but man, they come together at the right time. And we'll, we'll see if, if, uh, you know, McCaffrey can get something going. I think you can run on San Fran. I do. The pack ran on him. I think you can run. I think Detroit should have kept running on him. I think they got away from that a little bit. I think you can run on San Francisco's defense. So this, we'll um, see. It'll be fun. 
this Chiefs team reminds me a lot of <clears throat> the 2018 Patriots. Okay. That beat the Rams. Yep. In that like Super 13 Bowl. to 3 or something like that. Yeah, it was yep. a low, really low scoring, low scoring Super Bowl. game. A lot of their games throughout that year were low scoring games, not sexy games. Remember, yep. And they started off really slow. Remember the Jags beat them here? Yeah. And yeah, right. the revenge game That's for the right. AFC Championship. And then it crumbled from there. And that, for us. that team, <laughs> that, that 2018 Patriots team, they kind of limped through the season. And, yep. you know, you're watching Sunday night or Monday night football recaps, and they're talking about the weekend that was. And they're, man, the Patriots, you know, they're, they're not the same. They're not what they used to be, blah, 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 blah. But they're. They're treading water. Or they're they're staying above water. I mean, yep. they're winning enough games, and by the time they get to the postseason, they've got so much experience yep. to fall back on. Yep. They're finally getting some guys healthy, whatever, yep. and no one's a match for them. Right? No one can handle them. Yeah. And with the Chiefs, it feels the same way. They, they they've kind of limped through the season. They've yep. never really. But then they hit the stride. Well, and yep. don't haven't you gotten the feeling watching them in the playoffs? That like it's just so clear when you watch them and you watch the teams they've played. Yeah. It's just so clear who's been in these moments before and who hasn't. No, right. With the Ravens, it yep. was obvious because yep. that was a really physical game and both teams were getting heated. Yeah. One team was managing their emotions a lot better than the other. Oh, yeah. It was it was very clear from yep. the jump and making yep. less mistakes. Yep. Zay Flower starts to get heated, yep. personal foul penalty, then fumbles the ball at the wall. Like that type of stuff that the Chiefs yep. aren't doing. Right. Yeah, and it's, their experience is just hey, it holds its weight in volumes, right? Yeah, now. no, and listen, I I think you know I go back to watching that that KC offensive line do work on that. Those linebackers got work that game. They're great players, don't get me wrong, but Roquan Smith and Pat Queen, uh, they got engulfed, engulfed. They were frustrated. That that play, you know where he knocked him over at the end. That was out of frustration. It was like, oh, what a great play. No, he wanted to take a shot at that guard because that guard was wearing his ass out pretty much all game long. Trey Smith, watch that kid. He is he is quite the player. I and again, I think that's you can have all the the the, the stars. You can have all the speed, all the skill that you want, but you got to have the guys up front. And both these teams. They believe in that. I mean, go look at both O lines, both D lines. Now you may say Jawan Taylor's a you know again. Hey, I wonder if there's a prop bet on him. Like how many false starts will he have in the Super Bowl? There's guy. He's, he's if most they pe- call it, think about it. what would you say? Three? What's the over under three? False starts or just penalties? Uh, I'm gonna just say false starts. False starts. He, I yeah. would. I, I would bet the. I would set the over under at one and a half. So basically two. Okay. Yeah. Um, take the over. But what's what's not talked about? Head, that could be a problem. You know what's not talked about with him because he does false start a lot. Yep, dude, he holds a lot too. Well, did you see what Boza said? I think yesterday uh-huh. uh, they all they do is hold. <laughs> <laughs> Every old lineman's laughing out there like, yeah, yeah, of course we do. <laughs> it's not called holding, though, if they don't call it. But right? Jawan not only has the most false starts, he's the most penalized yeah. player in the league this year. Yeah. And when the, when the regular season ended, no yeah. no one player had more penalties well, than Jawan. He's, he's keeping it together or did last week. You know, and Buffalo, they, they've been all right overall. But, hey, like, I think there's an argument. To, you don't want – your lineman committing penalties, obviously. Right. You want them to play a clean game. But I yeah. do think there's an argument to be made that if if you're weighing pros, cons here, yep. do I get a holding call that backs us up 10, or do I let the best quarterback in the world get killed? Right. I'm going to hold. Well, the good thing about uh, if you're a lineman for Mahomey, you know you have a chance that he's going to break out. It's like with, with Lamar. You know, you know – I think Trevor could be that, too. I I want that ingrained in him a little bit more that he can take off and run, which brings me to my final topic of this uh, Friday's edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mack, brought to you by Team Tommy Mack. I love these businesses, man. They are great in what they do. They have a lot of integrity. You should uh, trust them because I do as well. Chris Lucero's Bail Bonds, j Dog Junk Removal, Graffiti Burger Bar, Outback Marine, Carpet Man Flooring, Code Ninjas, new to the team, Azar Sausage, Solomon Ventures, and Beach Life Rentals, also home of Assault there, Truck Action, a law firm, and of course, my family here at 1010 XL. So, some talk out there, not a ton of talk, about what to do uh, with Trevor Lawrence's contract. Do you pay him now? 
Uh, do you work on something now or do you wait uh, to make him earn it a little bit more? You know the camp I'm in, but let's just talk about it. So, okay, you would save money if you did it sooner than later. Later, But the amount of money, let's just, let's say it's $100 million difference, okay? $50 million, I mean total package, not per year. Let's just say it's $100 million. It's a six year deal. A hundred million is not that much for a quarterback contract. Right. So no, not six years for a hundred million. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it sounded like that. No, I but meant, I'm saying a six year deal, yeah. if what you're saving is a hundred million, that's different. It's obviously not like a two year contract. I just don't it. think the amount of savings the owners are, that Chai Khan really cares. I mean, not that he cares. It's a ton of money, but it's not in terms of the way the salary cap's gonna go up, how much cash he's willing to put in. You know what I mean? Like he's shown in the past. So I don't I don't think this whole, hey, let's get him done early so we have savings. I, I, I well, because what if what if it doesn't what if he has the same year that he had this year? Throw in all the the reasons you want to put in there. I don't care. Throw them all in there. But what if he does? And you just paid him, you know, whatever million a year. Top top dollar he takes over the lead which i'd be surprised but let's just say he was the highest paid qb in the game i don't think it, i don't think we're doing that but let's just say he was you know what i mean what if he has another year when uh, how much time do you give trevor lawrence to be yes he's it forever do you do it now do you do it do you do it now because you don't you can no. say it I, I, listen, I I'll, would. listen I, I, and I don't mean this on a shot to anybody out there, but there are a lot of people out there, they're afraid to critique Trevor Lawrence. Yes. They're afraid because people won't like them or that player won't like them or they'll get blocked on social media or they won't do an interview with them or won't – whatever. I don't – that's not my intention at all. I, w- I w- As I've said many a times, I wish nothing but the best for every single player – in the league, but on our team especially. I want Trevor to be an unbelievable quarterback. I want our team to win the Super Bowl. It matters. And and it doesn't just matter because I'm a former player and I love the organization. It just matters all across the board. I tell my kids, I'm like, hey, hey girls, the better the Jags do, the better daddy does. It, it's true. That's the way our, our, our community works, right? It revolves around our Jaguar. So I want them to do well. More money gets flown around, trust me, when they do well, as opposed to when they don't. It's just fact, and you can ask anybody about that. But that, So I, I'm in their corner. I want them to go to the Super I want them to win. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend like everything's just, yeah, fantastic, because that makes somebody else feel better. I've never done that. And I've always remained independent, and this is not, look, I've always remained independent because I've always wanted to be able to say what's ever on my mind. I don't ever want to have to sit there and have to sugarcoat or toe the line because I may get in trouble. And I've been through that. If you know my history, I've been through that. But I don't, I don't, that's not, I don't need a quote. I don't need a relationship. I don't need a follow on social media uh, to do my show. I don't. I'm just going to look at it and give it to you straight. Good, bad, what have you. Um, I would not pay Trevor Lawrence at this time. And I'm I'm not trying to get in his pocket. He's making plenty of money anyway. But will he get to that mega, mega deal? Well, I think this year is very important for him. And I think it's very important for him. I think it's very important for Doug Peterson. I think it's important for Balky. I think it's important for the entire organization. Because here's the deal, and I don't think we've missed. So please don't misunderstand me. I think he can do it. I've seen enough to where I think he can put it together. But I'm in the. I, you got to show me. I, there's no benefit of the doubt anymore. There are times he looks fantastic. There are games he looks fantastic. There are stretches of games that he has looked really good, really fantastic. But then there's other stretches, other plays, other games where he doesn't look good. He's throwing the ball all over the place. He's off target with his receivers. He's letting the ball go. You know, he's not being good with ball security. We all know these things. By the way, I looked it up because I was just curious. I didn't really know. Three years, 58 touchdowns, 39 picks, 33 fumbles. Just think about that for a second. Say he wasn't on our team. I'll ask Graham. Say that Trevor played for Seattle. 
What would you say about him? I call him overrated. Number one pick in the draft. Just and I love the kid. I do. I want him to be the guy. He he's got some work to do, but I want him to be the guy. He's a tough kid, and he represents our city and our franchise well. We've always, I've always thought that about. It. Even in that first year when it was a total shit show, he stood there tall and represented our team, and I love that about him. And I love his toughness on the field, and I love his competitiveness. But if he wasn't on our team, we'd be looking at him a little bit different. If if he was the first pick in the draft for say whatever, like I said, Seattle, you'd be like, ooh, that's not that good, right? Say you never watched him on TV, you just saw his stats. What would you say? He's a fumbling machine. He turns the ball over too much. There are some good things. Yeah, he makes some great throws. I've seen the highlights. Great, but overall, eh, just what okay. What I'd be saying right now, if he played for a different team, is I'd be like. He's a good quarterback, but for number one overall, he's not delivering enough. Right. Because that's the truth. It is it is true. That's but here, truth. But here's the thing. Every other offensive-minded coach outside of the Jags would be like, let me get my hands oh, on Oh, God, yeah. Because yeah. he does have that talent. Yeah, of course. He is extremely talented, and I want him to hone it in. I look again. I'll look at uh, – Josh Allen, it's very similar. You know, when Josh, you had to hone him in, and he's still not all the way honed in. When he goes off kilter, Josh Allen, he'll throw three interceptions all day long. But when he's on point, when he's honed in, that guy's ultra dangerous. And Trevor could be that too. He can. He's got the arm. He's got the size. He's got the toughness. He's just got to, the ball placement's got to be better. The awareness has got to be better. They got to help around. Look, and I, I said this last night in my opening uh, uh, dialogue uh, for the happy hour finale. I said, look, I would spend the majority, if I'm the Jags, the majority of my offseason, time, resources, money, effort, all on Trevor, all on building around Trevor Lawrence, because you have got to do everything you can to make him successful. And let's be honest here, ladies and gentlemen, when you miss on your first round QB and he doesn't turn out to be that franchise franchise quarterback, it sets you back. Now, nine and eight, nine and eight doesn't set us back. Isn't it funny about the nine and eights? Nine and eight last year. Oh, man, what a year. Nine and eight this year, utter disappointment. They're both nine and eight. But it's how you get to nine and eight. It's so the, I'm all in. Don't get me wrong. I'm all in. But I want to see it. This is a big year to prove that you are not. Look, talent wise, yeah. But it's more than just talent. I can run a great forty yard dash down the field. That doesn't mean I'm a great receiver. I can test well in the bench press. Doesn't mean I'm a great guard knocking people off the line of scrimmage. So. I'm all in on him. Build around him. Make sure everything's good around him. Make sure the play calling's built for him. Make sure you get him in rhythm. That's your job. Go with what works. Don't get so freaking cute on calls. You know, there's critique to go all around. It just ain't on number 16. But that guy has got, they all do around him, and he himself has got to improve. This season and last season are case studies of two things a expectations yep the expectations were so much higher going into this year so there were having the same record at the end of the season felt so much worse yep and then b it's not how you start it's how you finish yep 2022 started poorly right there what two and five right three and six yep and turned and then it on went crazy yep this season the it's almost it's basically the opposite you start yep. eight and three yeah eight and two Right and two, and then miss I mean, the were. miss the playoffs. Yeah, I know, and that's crazy. I agree. And so let me ask you this, okay? Uh, Casey's this is going to be their four out of five trips to the Super Bowl last five years. You think they do it just on talent alone? No, no, right? No, you think they? Do you think they stay humble and hungry every year? Yes. You think Mahomes? You think all of them, all those star players, Debo, you think they stay humble and hungry? Guaranteed they do because you don't just go to the AFC Championship game year after year after year. It is so hard to get there. We know this. We've been there. And it's even harder to get to the next, you know, the Super Bowl. But when you're – It's culture. That's what I'm getting at. It's talent. You got to have the talent. 
but the talent meets meets this matches. Sorry, the talent matches the scheme has got to match the identity slash culture of the team. And you go look at KC, you go look at San Fran. Guess what? Those guys match. They match talent wise. They match scheme wise, and they match match mentality and emotionally wise. It's the way they want to build their teams. It can be done. And that's got to happen here, in my opinion. Get humble. Get hungry. You got you got, you got to add some talent. We've already been through that. But you got enough. I want to keep Ridley. I don't, I'm, I don't know what to do with Cam just yet, but I love the attitude. If he could, if I knew he would give me 16 games, full speed, full power, I, I'd be great with him. But I don't know if you can count on that. But I'm keeping Ridley. Obviously, I'm taking care of Josh Allen. I'm adding to the interior. I'm I'm keeping my guys. If I lose Agni, I don't, I, I don't want to, but he's my return guy. I'd love him back. I'm not saying I'm not adding talent to any of those positions because I am, but you got enough core talent to be a contender if you get it all together upstairs in your gut, in your heart, and that work ethic and accountability and staying humble and getting hungry. That's how you make it in the NFL. Also, uh, and in dance too, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah. last kind of thing I'd, I'll add with those, the teams that are making it far is they're acquiring really, really important players in without having to invest a lot in them. And Good that's point. the management side of stuff. I mean, right. how important is I, as Isaiah Pacheco to that identity? Right. Okay. He's okay. a seventh round pick. They're not paying anything right. to. So, how he runs is part of yes, 100%, how they are. A hundred percent. He fits how they are. A few years ago, they had a little bit of a soft reputation. The Chiefs did. Right. And they did. They did. A little bit of, you know, they don't ground a pound enough in the yep. playoffs. Can they be rough and tough enough to consistently win in the playoffs when you have a QB as good as Mahomes? Pacheco comes. That's when Tampa got after him uh, in the Super Bowl. When it that year, I think. Pacheco runs... Like he caught the grass with his wife. Yeah. That's how he runs. He, I like to think his feet are on fire and he's like, ow, ow, yeah, ow, yeah, ow, yeah, ow, exactly. Ow. Like he's just hauling. It's, it's insane yeah. how he runs. He literally runs. Yeah. Like, it's almost like, you know, you know, the John Henderson slap video. Yeah. It feels like Pacheco does that before every play. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that team needed that at the time. Yeah. And he was a seventh round yeah. pick, man. Look, look at Rice, what they've done with him. Yes. Guy comes out, it's freezing temps. He's not wearing no sleeves. He's like, nah, man. We don't it may as well be 70 out here. We don't wear sleeves in, say, in Kansas City just because it's cold. And even Rice, though I'm a receiver. Rice was what, like a fourth yeah. round pick? Fourth, like, round, third, fourth round pick. And when you Great have. position. When you have those stars. Yeah. Like Kelsey, Mahomes, yeah. um, Chris Jones, and then you obviously have one of the best coaches of all time. You have to be able to fill out the roster yep. with high, with serviceable, really good players in Grunts. the bottom end of that. Yes. Grunts. And, Grunts are important. And I think the culture of a team often dictates how much success those guys have. Those yep. late-round guys, those yeah. flyer-free agent right. guys. It's not a coincidence that it seems Jeez. like – it's not a coincidence that it seems like the same teams over and over and over again right. strike gold in the sixth round. Right. Strike no, gold right. on right because they straight... stay true to their drafting philosophies. They and don't go vro- the go uh, rogue on them. In these organizations, we can name them. You know, it's the Chiefs, yep. it's the Niners, it's the Ravens. Have always been this way. Yep. The Steelers, Steelers. typically, yep. it's those. We can we can name these teams. They set guys up to succeed. Yep. Even if those guys are not. The high-priced, highly invested in guys. I agree, but they have to fit their standard. Yes, yes. Right? They have to fit 100%. their standard. You know, you you if you go to Baltimore, you got to play like Baltimore. You got to be part of that Baltimore nasty, physical, you know, don't make mistakes, discipline. That's who you are. That's who they are. They Year after year after year. I know they didn't get it done, this you know, in the championship game, but that, when you play the, the, the Ravens, you know what's coming. When you play the Steelers, you know, and the Steelers have been up and down, but you know, you know what's coming out of them. There's a standard there. There are other teams like that. We had a standard once. We did. We need to get that back. And again, um, you know, it could be a lot worse. 
Nine and eight, nine and eight. I don't like the way it ended either. They got a lot of work to do. But again, I think they got enough talent to get to that, you know, that threshold of getting into the playoffs and then making some noise in the playoffs. It's not going to be easy because everybody else is going to get better too. And that's in your division, especially. They are. Right. They will be more competitive next year. I I know people hated Trent Balky's press conference and thought it was the worst thing ever, and that there were yeah. things about it I didn't like as well. But that was one thing he said that I actually did agree with, and you just said it yourself. Like, was last year disappointing? Of course. Yeah. But it isn't like they won two games. I know. Okay. That, that was how you lost. It's very disappointing. 100%. I mean, if you're a Philly fan, how do you feel? Right, exactly. You're like, what? We're 10 but, and 1. But I do think the yeah. point remains like, look, th- this was a team with a winning record. They were one game away from winning the division. Yep. And that's saying a lot in Jacksonville. Yep. When you look at the last, you know, 15 years of the franchise. 20 years of the franchise. Agreed. So it feels like they're, it probably feels like they're a lot further off than I would argue they are. I think that you, you've you said this a thousand times. I don't feel they're times. that far off. I, don't I really don't. They I need a few you. key components, but I don't you've, think they're that far off. You say this every week, and I, I couldn't agree more. They're missing more than anything an attitude adjustment. More than any player. I agree. More than any player, they're just missing a mentality. And I don't know how you... There's multiple ways you can gain that mentality back. Yep. Is it that you get an Isaiah Pacheco type of player in some way that's going to be really angry well, and well, physical well, all the well, time? I think you got to go even further back. What What is the identity? Yeah. What What is it? It's not physical. You're not. Right. Some of your guys, some of the guys are physical. Okay, I'm not saying that, but think about it. You're a pass first finesse offense. That's what you are. And the pass better work in order for the whole offense to work. When the pass doesn't work, the run game ain't gonna work. And it's if you're just not gonna happen. If you're a pass first finesse offense, by the way, what should that mean? That should mean you're getting a lot of explosive plays on offense. You should have you no, I'm not saying every week, but Every so often during the season, you should have like a 45-point game. To me, a pass-first offense is like the old Brady run offense. You hit that slant, the, the, the slot for five. You go over here to the quick slant for six. You come back over. You know what I mean? Then you hand the ball off. Then you take a shot deep. Right. Then I go back and do it all over again. You know, it's an extension. I'm not talking bubble screens. Those are too risky. I'm talking plays that you know. Like, for, like if I'm – Ridley. His quick slant got really good. Him and Trevor got on some good points on that quick slant throughout the uh, the end of the year last year. I mean, that would be one of my go-to plays, right? Ingram down the middle, right? In the middle, keeping him inside, inside those numbers. Trevor's throws inside the numbers are great. He can handle even deep. He's normally on target. It's the outside throws that he has a little some struggle with on, on ball placement and, and accuracy and those types of things. So put him in those easier type throws. That's how you start. Boom, I hit the slot for seven. Now it's second and three. It's not, hey, run the ETN up the center's ass and get one maybe. And now it's second and nine. Now I got to figure something. You know what I mean? Give yourself a chance. I'm not saying throw the ball every first down, but when you throw the ball on first down, that keeps that defense and it's successful. That keeps them you know, on their toes. And I'm not talking throwing a bomb. Now, if you hit it, great. You caught them. But I'm not, I don't want second and 10 because you threw a, you know, a throw that, you know, was a low percentage. Yeah, I want, a, I want a high percentage completion, not a low one on that first down and get me into some rhythm. And then you keep them off their, you know, you keep them on their toes in the, the other side and they don't know what hits them then. That's a pass for, and I'm okay with that. And you can run the ball on those things because you get out on the perimeter. You get your guys pulling, and they don't have to just drive guys into the ground. All they got to do is get in their way, so you're back and just keep going. Well, That's back, when it works. Back to that uh, 2018 Patriots team, they struggled to run the ball that entire year, but James White was the best receiving back in football. Right, right. Short, it was an extension of the running game. Short throws to James White yep. was the run game. Agreed. Little screens, right. little dump offs, right. little check downs. We use the bubble screen for that. Yes. Which one out of five it works? Maybe. And did you know? It takes this guy to beat the block and, and it's you're done. All it takes is me to read it and shoot and you're done. If you don't make that first guy miss, you're done. It's over. You also have to have 
your receivers have to be exceptional blockers for receiver screens to Very work regularly. Very strong, yep. I felt like their wide receiver screen game worked a lot better before Christian Kirk got hurt. Because I think Christian Kirk's a great blocker downfield. Yeah, he's physical. And get after it. when Kirk went down, yep. it, it felt like that stuff got blown up a lot more. It felt like corners right. and safeties were beating their blocks and blowing it up a lot faster. Right. So Kirk goes down. You draft Parker to replace him. So you got to put a lot of pressure on that young man to fill that void. 100%. Because you can't, you know, the, the, the season can't go to shit because one of your star guys is done or out for a significant period of time. Now, look, Kirk goes down, Zay's not healthy. That, that does affect you. However, it's your job to make sure you got guys that can step in like and at least do some of what you know, they're they're capable of doing. Now, I was clamoring for Elijah uh, Cooks because he's big and fast. He would be out there. Trevor never looked at him. Threw him to one on an in route, and he dropped it, which, you know, you can't drop it, and that doesn't give you any confidence. But he never really went to him. So I don't know, could he, could he fill the void that Zay left? Because you do need the speed on the other. Look, you have to realize every offense is what? X. Down the field to take that safety out. I got a I got a uh, a Z on this side that I can count on on those tough catches over the middle. I got a slot guy that's going to put a lot of pressure on that nickel one on one. I got a tight end that can go down the seam and do crossing pass. And then I got an ETN out of the backfield. You got it. That's that's your that's how you set it all up, right? And it all starts with what the X, because without the X, this other stuff. Is it going to be that impressive? Maybe the Y if he's a Zay Jones because he could run, right? Now let's bring it back. Take out this slot. You still got your outside guys, but you don't got nobody working the inside. The best routes or the best damage that Captain Kirk's ever done is what? Flush everybody out one-on-one, zip, 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 give him the ball, and he's taking off for big gain. It was how they won the Saints game. Correct. Remember that little jerk route he Great ran and play. beat that inside linebacker? He's that kind of player, but that doesn't work when you don't have the outside guys that they're worried about. So it all does work together. His first few years in the league, Patrick Mahomes had basically the first 15 yards of the field were borderline free because yeah. the defenses were so terrified of Tyreek Hill. Right. And you just right. create it's it's like a it's like an elite three point shooter in basketball. When you force the defense <coughs> to go over there, you just create so much extra space for other guys to work. Okay. Let me, I'm gonna take it back, but you know, Jimmy Smith scared the hell out of everybody, which made oh, that God, safety yeah. and corner gone. So take them out of the equation. He was so good at breaking off his routes at full speed that you thought he was going deep every single time. So when he broke off a five yard slant that corner was not on him for the most part because he fooled, he thought he was going deep, right? So now you take care of that. Then you got what? Keenan McCarter, wah, 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 come across the middle, make the tough catch, boom. Now you got what? You got Willie Jackson or Reggie Barlow, one-on-one in the slot. Nobody's going to cover him. It, it all, then you got a tight end, either Pete Mitchell, then Kyle Brady, and then, you know, we, we look at Ingram. You know what I mean? Like those are – they all work together, and it's all predicated on timing. It is. It's uh, there's timing to every single route tree out there, and when that ball should arrive, where it should arrive, and what spot it should arrive. Now, granted, everything else has got to work out. My line's got to block for me. My my receiver's got to be on time with his cut, on time with his route, getting off the release, not getting jammed. If he does get jammed, if they do alter his route, then you break off the route because in your head the clock's running. Right? I got so many seconds for that ball. I got to be in that spot or close to that spot. If I break it off early and he sees me, maybe he'll throw it early. You know what I mean? So those are things that, you know, you they just all work together. And I'm not trying to d- d- make excuses for them. But when, when you lose, you lose Kirk, you lose Jones, you got Ridley who sometimes doesn't know what he's doing. By the way, I love how that comes out now. When did Kirk get hurt? What week was that? Bengals game, so I think it's week 13, I believe. So prior to that, I'll never forget, when I came on this show, I'll never forget the game before, uh, Ridley was in the slot and Kirk was running a motion across the formation and he was starting on the outside. And as he's running across, Ridley looks at him and it's like throws his arms up like, what? And, and I swear I could see 
Kirk like yelling at him. He's going like, how do you not know this shit? Like as I'm going by him, like, come on, man. I, I got to worry about my own job. I can't be worried about you knowing where you have to be on every seat. And you saw it happen. So all these breakdowns and then the hits on the quarterback and then Trevor getting, it, it just wasn't going to work because you're a pass first offense. And when your passing offense doesn't do it, you're not going to have much of an offense overall. You know what? Consistently, anyway. You know what I felt like was said at the end of the season that there was so much other stuff to talk about right after the Titans game. There's and there was so much other stuff to react to that I felt like this flew yep. under the radar a little bit. But in the locker room after the game, Calvin Ridley said something a little weird that okay. I thought didn't get enough. Press. I don't know if I remember hearing it. It was it, it's after the game. And you know, you know, after the game, they're kind of especially the guys that yeah. the contracts are up there asking, yep. you know, you know, thoughts on your future and all that, whatever. And they asked him that question. And he said he said he wants to be here, you know. And his reasoning was weird. It was something about like, I'm paraphrasing, but it had to do with like, yeah, you know, I don't want to learn a whole new offense, basically. Yep. Like I've just learned this one type right. of thing. And like that's like I feel like for most players in the back of their mind, especially with how complicated offenses are nowadays, that's a, a reasonable thing to say. But it was just weird for someone to publicly say that. Yeah. Well, I mean, most offenses are the same. The, the, the terminology is different. That's what you got to memorize. But isn't that isn't maybe that he's kind of learning this? I don't know. Maybe maybe just uh, uh, my. But again, let's just say, for whatever reason, he you know can't figure out part of the playbook. Well, then don't use that part while he's in there. Because he does bring, let me, I'll throw you an example. The deep crossover, what week was that? Remember that? That was a beautiful Texans play. Game. What? Texans game. You got a great memory. The week keep, before keep Kirk got hurt. <laughs> keep it going. No, seriously. Right? Yeah. Crossing route over the middle about 25 yards downfield. Did we ever go back to it? We never had time. We never went, but did we, I don't even remember him running that route. Like, I remember yeah. him running that route when he caught the pass. I don't remember running that route. You know what I mean? It just kind of like the twelve yard out when Trevor's on, he hit. Nobody can cover that. You notice that this year, that was probably eighty percent completion percentage from that throw, maybe seventy. And especially toward the end of the season, I don't know. Teams see it on film; they know yeah. it's coming. Right, right. My point Jim, is, but you said it earlier. Jimmy used to run those routes, those types of routes, all the time because teams are terrified of him going deep. And, and when he, he had him fooled off, every time, like, yeah, he had him fooled every single time. You know, I think that, and you got to have that player if you're going to have a successful passing offense. Now, look at KC. Well, they got the QB, but they got the tight end, so he's the focal point. They don't need an X, Tommy Mack. Why don't they need an X? Well, they've got a QB and a tight end that nobody can, for some reason, stop. That'll do it. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. They just they. They keep performing at a high level. Just they're, they're absolutely like, incredible. It also doesn't feel like Travis Kelsey ever runs like like a route that I've seen. Oh, right. Yeah, he's just, get open. Right. He just, it, it, yeah. it literally feels, like, it's know. obviously, obviously there's more of a science to it. Right. But doesn't it feel like he just finds a soft spot and parks there? Well, I think they're, they're really good at reading defenses. And when there's a zone, they know when to sit on. The good ones know where that hole is. And, hey, I'm, I'm going to be. And I, I, I got to wonder, Andy Reid and company probably say, look, just be in the you know, this vicinity, you know what I mean? Just be, and it's not going to be a wide one, but it, instead of being right at this point, just be near that point and find that groove, find that hole, and Patrick will eventually find you. And you would you would think that with how small holes are, how small windows are in the NFL, and how quickly the quarterback's reaction time has to be when he sees something open up. Yep. You would think that with that type of play style, you would see with Reed, with uh, Kelsey and Mahomes, you'd think you'd see a lot more miscommunications and right. you'd see a lot more, yeah. oh, well, Kelsey wanted to go this way, but Mahomes threw right. it this way type of thing. So it, it, he ended up throwing it right to a DB because they were on the set. You'd think you'd see that a lot. Yep. And you see that out of it. You see that here yep. with Ridley and Trevor. Oh, yeah. Somehow th that Ingram never happens Trevor. with those guys. No, well, they're just. Ever. Maybe they practice it so much that it's secondhand nature. It's wild. Maybe they do it so much that they don't even have to think about it. I mean, it's just anymore. elite stuff. It is. I think it's one thing to be a really in a special player in the NFL. If you can make the NFL look easy, it's obviously yep. not. But if you can make it yep. look easy, then you're even a higher level of player. Yep. You look at at Travis Kelsey, and you're like, I could have run that route. 
You obviously couldn't, but no. like it just it's it doesn't seem like he's like stressing super hard to get right. to where he needs to be. Does well, that make just, sense? Yeah. What I'm well, think of the uh, and we, we got to go, but think of the what was the game uh, they called holding on it, but he caught the pass and then threw it. He did it with so little effort. Remember, it, it, it didn't in the in the in the. Uh, and Kadarius Tony ran it in for a Oh yeah, when when touchdown. Tony was offsides. Well, he was offsides. Bills. That's right. He yeah. was offsides. But just think of that fluid motion. Catch his ball running. Oh, perfect spiral. Dude, he's like a like, damn. I know. I just right in the bread basket and off he goes. He looked like, like a point guard on a fast break. Wow, he always yeah, he's he looked like Magic Johnson. Yeah, you know, where he's like yeah, like no look pass. Yeah. It was crazy, I know. dude. Well, and it was. Special. You're right. It was a perfect pass, but perfect like, spot, like, perfect spot. And he was like, you know, did they practice that a ton, or is that just a dude that's so athletically gifted and he his awareness? I mean, that field awareness is is a big thing for all positions and man, the balls to do at. it, bro. But and the balls to do it. Yeah, you got to be a right. Travis Kelsey status player. Yeah. Cause well, he don't lack you confidence. You can't be the third string tight end doing he that. He don't lack man. no confidence. No, no. But by the shouldn't. way, you know, I noticed his attire before the game. Did you see him walking off the plane? You see that uh-uh. little makeup he had on, or not makeup? What what he was wearing? No, I didn't. You ever see the movie The Professional with Leon, who's the uh, the assassin? I don't think Natalie so, no. Portman's in it, and he used to wear this hat and these circle glasses. That's how he came off the plane, and I was like, because it's called The Professional. Yeah. And knowing Kelsey, I'm like, I wonder if that was part of his little sticks. I was like, ooh, because that's if you haven't seen that movie, it's called The Professional. Go see it. How it's fly. a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. How fly would you look walking into the stadium? Pretty badass. Well, no, that's not my style. What would you wear? What, what would, your... would I wear? I I don't know. I I probably wear a tank top. Did guys do it up as much back then as they do now? Oh, yeah. I mean, really? there were some suits. I, I wore the same damn thing. I hated wearing a suit. I had a blue jacket and khaki pants. <laughs> I didn't care, man. I barely even tied my tie. I hated it. You'd be like, I wore it wearing right now I mean, against get, the Bills. Get me out of here. I, I, you know, I, I, I would have always loved to travel in, like, sweatsuit. That would be the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was always jealous when you see a team like come off and they're or they're just in their casual stuff. Wear whatever you want. I like that too. But well, dude, I always think about it know. when when those guys are like fitted up and they're walking yeah. onto the plane or whatever, and you know the Jaguar social yeah. media will post and every team does it. Yeah. Like if you got a long flight, are you gonna sit and all that stuff? No, on I know. Multi out. Like I I, I agree Sweat. with you. I, I want some comfort if I'm gonna be flying. I know. It's, it's, I know. It's, it's, I know it's cool more to look than cool. Than you know, it's a big boat. deal. I, I the, the fellas love to uh, compete with each other too. Like I oh, think 100%. Jimmy one year had alligator shoes and alligator suit, and then Keenan next time had something snake. I mean, it's like it was. And they look great too. It. I mean, they look fantastic. <laughs> I'm like, man, I wouldn't wear that, but that, you guys look absolutely incredible. But uh, anyway, this has been a fun Friday. Uh, appreciate y'all tuning in here on Facebook and and on the app, of course, and 1010XL.com. Uh, headed down to Orlando. Again, for Nancy Dance Studios, going to go to Douglas Anderson tonight for a dance recital my daughter's in, and then down to compete on stage. I tell you what, no matter what you're doing, competition is a good, good thing. Thank you, Team Tommy Mac. Thanks to all my friends who came out last night. We'll be back on Tuesday. Another big week next week. Catching up with Tommy Mac, the horse's mouth. Um, of course, Jaguars today and the Dad Pods at Ninja Fest out in Fleming Island, courtesy of Code Ninjas, a cool way to learn code. Make sure you check them out and check out all the great businesses with Team Tommy Mac. Till next time, stay safe, man, and be cool. We'll see you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mac. Peace.